Okay, we have a cone and they tell us what the volume, the formula for the volume of a cone is. That's nice of them. I strongly recommend you learn that off by heart anyway, okay? So volume of a cone is the third pi r squared h. They tell us the volume, it's 98 cm cubed. They tell us the radius, it's 5.13 centimeters. And we have to estimate, not calculate, if this is a non-calc paper, we have to estimate h, the height of the cone. Okay, just quickly, be careful not to confuse h, the height of a cone, with l, okay? The length of the slanting side of the cone is given by l. We don't need to worry about l in this particular question, but it's important you know, just for your general education, that l and h are different. Okay, right, we have to estimate h. So, here's the formula. First thing to do, is to get h by itself. In other words, rearrange the formula to make h the subject, okay? So, multiply both sides by three and divide both sides by pi r squared. And we get that h is equal to three v over pi r squared. Okay, good. Now, Put in the numbers, h is equal to three. Now, I'm going to write the numbers exactly as we've been given them yet. I know we're estimating, but initially write them in as the actual number. Don't round them yet, okay? So it's three times 98 over pi. Well, pi is 3.14. Okay, times r squared, r is 5.13, 5.13, and I'm not going to write it squared, I'm going to write it as 5.13 times 5.13. Okay, so if we had a calculator, we'd stick that into the calculator and work out the exact value of h, but we're not allowed a calculator, we have to estimate. So this is where we have to, oops, h is approximately equal, squiggly equals, means approximately equals two. Right, well three, three is just three. We'll definitely leave that alone. That's a nice round number. Which number is 98 pretty close to? It's pretty close to 100, isn't it? Much easier to work with 100 than 98. So we round that to 100, okay? 3.14. It's pretty close to three. 5.13 is pretty close to five. 5.13, pretty close to five, okay? So that's our estimate of H. So H is approximately equal to, well, three on the top, three on the bottom. We can cancel them straight away, okay? 100. Divided by five times five is 25. Ah, oh, it's nice and easy, you can do that in our heads. So it's approximately equal to four. There we go. That is our estimate for the height of the cone. Good. Now, the last part of this question, it asks you to say, is this estimate of four is that larger or smaller than the actual value of h? Okay, that's the actual value of h, okay? If you put that in the calculator, you get the accurate value. Is that bigger or smaller than the estimate? Well, let's have a look. We rounded this number, 98, we rounded that up, okay, to 100. So that, purely from that alone, we're making the estimate larger. Now, these numbers, 
we made smaller. This number we made smaller, okay? We went from 3.14 to 3, 5.13 to 5. And of course, the same for this one. We made that one smaller. Now, these numbers are all in the denominator, okay? And when you make numbers in the denominator smaller, you make the whole thing bigger. So therefore, because we increased a number in the numerator on top, that made the estimate bigger. And by decreasing all the numbers in the denominator, that also made the estimate bigger. So therefore, the estimate is bigger than the true value. Okay? So the estimate is larger than the true value. Okay? I'll just quickly explain why numbers in the denominator make a number, when they get smaller, the number gets bigger. Let's look at a fraction. Let's look at a half, okay? So, there's a half. Let's make the number in the denominator bigger, okay? Let's make it, increase it from two to three, right? Which of these numbers is bigger? A half is bigger. A third is a smaller than a half. So by increasing the number in the denominator, we've made the whole thing smaller. Let's do it again. Let's make this number even bigger. Let's increase it to 10, okay? Same thing's happened. We, every time we've made the numerator larger, but the whole thing becomes smaller because a tenth is a smaller than a third. Do it again. Let's make it even bigger. Let's make it a thousand, okay? See, one thousandth is definitely smaller than a tenth, and so on and so on. Good. Right, that's it. There we go. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please click the like button and it would be a massive help if you could subscribe. It would also be amazing if you could support me on Patreon. All the papers and everything are on my website, drgem.com, and I'm also on social media. Thank you.